as I'm saying that, I've never actually seen Game of Thrones, but I think the vibes are there. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing fall book racks. I, if you've seen my Instagram, I love this time of year. Fall and winter are my favorite seasons. As soon as pumpkin starts at Starbucks, I burst in line for my pumpkin drinks. And I feel like there are books that are, like encapsulate the feeling of this season of just coziness of, I don't know how to describe this fully. It's like cozy, sometimes dark, sometimes comforting, like fall reads. That's not a very good description, but hopefully the books I'm recommending help that make sense for you. So I'm in my autumn outfit. Okay, I fixed the camera angle so you can see more of this outfit. I'm in my fall outfit. I went and got my pumpkin cream cold brew. Can I just say I love the Thursday BOGO that Starbucks has going on in September. It has been such a fun thing to do after work. I have been talking about this order also nonstop. It's a pumpkin cream cold brew, but I swap out the vanilla syrup in the cold brew for two pumps sugar-free vanilla. You don't have to do that. You can just have regular vanilla if you want and then two pumps pumpkin sauce. And then I also add a bit of half and half because for me, Starbucks's cold brew runs a little bit bitter and I just wanna lighten it up a little bit. I want more pumpkin flavor, not just in the foam, but also in the full drink. All right, let's do what I came for. Recommend some books. So these are what books I think encapsulate fall. It's not a complete list. If you have recs, drop them in the comments. We can build a larger list. I feel like there are more books that I own that I could tell you about that are fall related, but I can't think of anything else. So starting with one of my top reads of the year and one of the most precious copies I own, gotta make sure my hands are clean, we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Divine Rivals for Soul Minute for the edition, as always. Stunning. A little bit for the under. This edition, as some of you may know, is highly sought after now. I was lucky enough to find a kind soul who was willing to trade it for another edition I had. Divine Rivals, like I said, one of my top reads of the year. This is an academic rivals to lovers, which I feel like fall definitely gives off like the dark academia vibes. And this book has a bit of that. There's also a fantasy element to, to it. So if you're more of a fantasy reader and you don't really like contemporaries, don't worry, you can still enjoy this book. There is a fantastical, fantastical? Is that how you'd say it? element to it? And it makes for such a cozy, heartwarming read. It just makes, I feel like this book just gives off cozy vibes and it's so good. Going away from cozy and into more spooky vibes is The Red Palace. This is a book set in ancient Korea. I'm blinking on the actual century. And it is a murder mystery. We see a palace nurse and a police investigator team up to solve these murders. And there's some slow burn romance and this is the perfect spooky read. I cannot talk about it enough. One of my favorite books. Third book I'm recommending for fall reads is Thorn by Intisar Kanani. It really is for me also like warm and cozy vibes, although the story is like an intense fantasy with some trigger warnings I'll put on the screen. It could definitely just be that Thorn is a comfort read for me and a safe space and a book I go back to so often, but I really do think Thorn is one of the best fantasy books out there. I love the main characters. I always say the characters and Soda's characters are always my favorite characters I've ever read. They're so well written. And her female characters are so strong and you don't get secondhand embarrassment and they're just so good. If you're looking for a good, solid YA fantasy, Thorns Your Girl. Also, the colors are giving fall. Alright, fourth book I'm recommending. This is more of a series. It is the Fallen Kingdom series. Fallen Kingdoms, I've often described it as Game of Thrones, but YA. As I'm saying that, I've never actually seen Game of Thrones, but I think the vibes are there. <laughs> it's a YA fantasy series. Has a like dark, uh kind of like dangerous vibe to it. it really makes for just a great full read it's a series you just kind of escape into next i'm kind of iffy about this wreck so let me know what you guys think i said legend by marie lu which is one of her first i think the first series by her i ever read legend something about it maybe that it's such a nostalgic read for me it gives me the warm and fuzzies that i feel like i have during fall it's a dystopia wreck so if you're moved from dystopia it's a classic and I love it. Then we have For the Wolf, which is a Red Riding Hood retelling. For the Wolf, I think is more of like the gothic spooky vibes. There is, I think, a little bit of coziness in it just because I'm attached to the characters, but it's a really good retelling. It's a duology. I actually didn't like the second book. However, you might 
So I say definitely go for it, and the first book is fantastic. So the next book I'm recommending is Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is one of Margaret's multiple standalones. She, I think, is the only author I know that writes standalones, like, consistently. I think her latest book was going to be a series. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a standalone. It's fantasy. There's fairies. There's magic. There's mischief. Her standalones are always good. This one definitely gives me warm vibes, like, fall vibes. There's still a conflict and all that because it has to have a plot, but it's just definitely, I think, does it just take place during the holidays? I can't remember. I read this like two years ago, but I remember it being fantastic, and if you like fairy kind of fantasies, this one's for you. Then we have A Darker Shade of Magic, which is V.E. Schwab's one of her adult series that she's actually releasing Thread of Power soon. To this I feel like is a book I can just get lost in. It's a fantasy that has... In this fantasy world, there's four versions of our world. Primarily, they stick to London. Um, that's kind of like the points of like, there's red London, other colors London. I forgot the names. I read this like so long ago. This is the thing about like reading these books so long ago and then going and reading a bunch of other books. Your mind throws up too much. The series, it's fun. It's adventurous. I know a lot of people like it. It's popular for a reason. I personally really enjoyed it. I do think it's the covers. I have the old paperback covers that are influencing this decision a little bit just because the colors are screaming fall. My last two recs are contemporary like I promised. First one is Inheritance Games. At first sight you might not be thinking that's a fall rec, but it is a mystery and I feel like mystery goes with spooky October. That's the math. Inheritance games I actually really really enjoy. I'm not normally a fan of love triangles between brothers because I think that's kind of weird but I think this one is done well enough that I can enjoy it so I'm sure you can imagine my thoughts on the summer turn pretty. It's a great mystery. The whole I liked the whole trilogy. I actually just recently read The Brothers Hawthorne which is a continuation and I really enjoy that one as well so if you're in for a good mystery and that's it for you. Last book is also a mystery. It's Thieves Gambit, which is coming out soon. September 26th, it comes out. It is a Ocean's Eleven meets Inheritance Games spy mystery slash thriller. It is so fast paced. It's a book to lose yourself in. And you, honestly, you're just going to gobble it up. I <laughs> get it because like turkeys. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. So those are my 10 fall wrecks. Let me know what books you think give off fall vibes that you're going to read this season. And let me know what drink you're drinking while you read your fall books. And that's all from me. I'll see you next time. Bye.